Now, as little as two years ago, the account posting the most about Cristiano Ronaldo was probably a 14-year-old child with a Lionel Messi Twitter avi and a 35p energy drink. But fast forward 20 to 30 months, and a streamer with unprecedented growth has completely changed the face of his entire brand. And it all started with one donation. What soccer football team do you support? Cristiano Ronaldo, Suey. The rise of iShow Speed has been quick, it's been controversial, and at times it's just been bizarre. <laughs> but how did a relatively unknown streamer manage to change the online face of one of the biggest athletes in world history and become one of the biggest faces in modern football? Now, I'm going to assume at this point you all know who I show Speed actually is, whether it be through clips of him raging on TikTok during streams, whether it be him playing terribly at charity football matches, or whether it just be him throwing his batty about. I show Speed has transformed the face of live streaming alongside the likes of Kai Senate in America, but not only that, has had one of the weirdest transitions into becoming a football influencer. It's strange because two to two and a half years ago, you wouldn't have been able to imagine anything further from the truth. In fact, you wouldn't have imagined anything because you probably didn't know who I Show Speed was. When his channel registered all the way back in 2016 to 2017, he was posting gaming clips on his YouTube channel and streaming to about on average two viewers. This was a kid who liked basketball, who liked NBA and just wanted to post or stream to his friends or whatever audience that he could manage to achieve, like we all did in the start. Hey there guys, this is Niran here, all flying orangutan, as you can see from the title of our channel. But probably with a better microphone than me. His big break would come in 2021 when people started sharing loads of clips of him raging on TikTok. And uh, he wasn't just raging, guys. You know, this wasn't just uh, a controller through the desk every now and again. It was getting wild. He do mental stuff like destroy his entire setup and get banned like most weeks. But it wasn't that that gave him his big break in the football community. That was through one key donation. Cristiano Ronaldo. And bang, just like that, at the click of a finger, annihilating a pronunciation so badly it wouldn't even stand up in a court of law. Not the only court of law that Ronaldo would have been in. But something new had started, an obsession with football and Cristiano Ronaldo, a sport that he knew absolutely nothing about but would go on a grand chase and journey just trying to meet his idol, his new hero. An interest in football was starting to blossom mostly fueled through people knowing that he had no idea how to play football and that he was probably going to continue to pronounce people's names wrong, but an interest would start nonetheless. He almost converted to the dark side after watching clips of Lionel Messi. Nah, I'm tripping. A few months in, he found out what a Tottenham was. Tottenham Hill, Mr. Tottenham Hill. And that truthfully, the clubs and the, the entirety of League On just basically isn't real. Marcielli, Lion, Clermont Foot. Toulouse, breast. And in that respect, he might be onto something. At this point, he's starting to garner global attention. He's racking through hundreds of thousands of subscribers in the space of 24 hours. He's going from 500,000 subscribers to a million within the space of like four days. Waking up after a sleep six hours later to arrive at a new milestone. The guy's blowing up from all angles. Pause. And eventually it's not just him that's starting to take notice of the world of football, the world of football is starting to take notice of him. He's being invited to football clubs and the likes of West Ham, being given a special shirt by them if he goes and watches a game. He's invited to play in the 2022 Sidemen charity match, the biggest the YouTube group have done up to this point at Charlton Stadium, The Valley. This off the back of football clips showing that he's not very good at football. And in the build up, he's starting to build a rivalry with KSI. And that would result in just a minute into the game, a blow to KSI that a Chelsea supporting OnlyFans model could only dream of. Nicholas Jackson, calm down in the back. I can see you by the way, let's chill out. A horrible challenge, probably a sprained ankle in the process. And the fact that he's been taken down by his bitter rivals so early on in the game, a real punch to the stomach for JJ. Or more of an elbow in his case. As I said, a shocking challenge, but a funny moment. And a, one of a number that speed would provide during the course of this game. A diving header that makes him look like the equipment used at the Olympics in track and field, step overs using the pelvis of a 73 year old man, and a brilliant finish, a sensational goal in front of tens of thousands of fans. Except it was offside by, we're talking like seven yards. But it was an incredible moment nonetheless. One that ended with him whipping referee Mark Clattenburg straight after. It was clip content, things that were gonna go viral in a matter of seconds. Something that Speed had proven he was already so good at up to this point in his, you know, streaming career. After this, the obsession with Ronaldo would start to grow. He had a taste for actually playing football, not a taste for Ronaldo, but his arm would have a taste of Ronaldo as he got a new tattoo to commemorate the idol that he looked up to. And with Ronaldo still at Manchester United at this point,
point, his teammate, Jesse Lingard, would confirm that he did actually know who I show speed was. But he actually knows me. He actually knows me. And he definitely started to know who he was when Speed started making appearances on Sky Sports in the build-up to Premier League matches. It was very well known that at this point, he actually wanted to go and see Ronaldo play in the flesh. That was the overall goal. And everybody in their power was trying to make this one happen, except for Cristiano Ronaldo. You see, unfortunately, at this time, there was also the slightly unfortunate event of Cristiano Ronaldo telling the entire world that he didn't like Manchester United. So things were starting to bubble on behind the scenes with himself and the current interim manager, Ralph Ranick. Speed famously went to Craven Cottage to go and watch his GOAT play against uh, Fulham, only to get into the Sky Sports studio and be told that he wasn't in the starting 11 or the squad. Stop, don't do this to me. And suddenly the fact that he was unable to go and watch his favorite player play became the new meme. It wasn't, oh yeah, he can't pronounce his name properly. It was the fact that Ronaldo seemed to actively be avoiding this kid at all costs. And this would, of course, all culminate in the interview that Big Ron did with Piers Morgan, and then, of course, his move to Saudi Arabia and Al Nazar. At this point, Speed still hasn't met his hero, hasn't even watched him play. I mean, well, he's met his lookalike. And at this point, his music career was really starting to kick off as well. Now, I don't know whether Speed really takes the, the music stuff seriously. It seems like something he definitely wants to get into, but whilst he's got this gimmick going on, it was definitely a new way to push that. With, of course, the debut song about football being Ronaldo in bracket suey. Mr. Ronaldo! <laughs> And then World Cup, which of course, in the build-up to Qatar 2022, received so much backing that it actually charted, going number 52 in the UK, and even went number one in the Netherlands. I don't know what they're cooking over in the Netherlands. Well, actually, that's a lie. I do know a lot of things that they'd be cooking in Amsterdam. But either way, I mentioned Sky Sports there briefly. That collaboration wouldn't really continue for all that long, though. And this is where we start to get into I Show Speed's controversies. At this point, this story that I'm telling you is kind of like nice and rosy. Oh, yo, a streamer only used to get two viewers he says Ronaldo funny once and now he's like yo he's traveling across the world and that but then he made like sexual harassment jokes and stuff on stream well, he, he did no you didn't mention that part before the first controversy really I, I think or major one that uh that speed was involved in was when he was doing twitch e dating streams uh, with aiden ross controversial streamer in his own right as well but basically during the height of lockdown streamers would come together they'd be matched with a, a girl who either streams themselves or is just i don't know like an insta baddie or something they'd have to go on an e date for everyone to watch and you'd get to see how they'd i don't know interact with a woman for probably one of the first times in life now but during this he made some pretty horrendous remarks basically and they were evolved around the answer to a question in which the girl he was on an e-date with said that she wouldn't get with him even if they were like the last two people on earth to which speed's response was pretty grim and made reference to sexual assault aiden then stopped him kind of ended the stream and kicked him off of it in the aftermath of that obviously there was like an apology there was a lot of heated debate between the two of them but it was obviously not a joke that she or any other woman would need to hear or want to hear at all the one thing about speed is that all the way through his rise his rapid rise to stardom is that he is young he's still young now he's still like six years younger than i am and during his proper blow up phase he was like 16 turning 17 and i think unfortunately a combination of that and wanting to be this edgy character and just going way beyond the line meant that he found himself in quite a few controversies old clips of him playing valorant where he was clearly being misogynistic to a woman that he was playing the game with resurfaced a few years after they happened and i mentioned the fact that he made a song for the world cup but when he went out there controversy would follow him again as he went up to a chinese fan konnichiwa no no chinese chinese konnichiwa argentina Chinese, no Why you to Just not okay, really. And unfortunately, kind of trying to tap into a young audience that might understand the harmful stereotypes and tropes behind things like that, but being edgy and trying to push the lines until realizing that an actual grown audience knows that you can't be doing things like that. And that's, of course, why ties were then severed between himself and Sky Sports, and we didn't see him on the channel again. It wouldn't stop him trying to pursue Cristiano Ronaldo, though, throughout the rest of 2022. With Big Ron heading over to Al Nazar to try and start up the Saudi Arabian project, Speed would head out there and follow him and finally get to see him play as well as seeing Ronaldo score his first goal in front of him in the stadium. But he'd still, still not met him up to this point. But that would all change after Portugal's game versus Bosnia. This was a massive moment, kind of in streaming and general content creation history. A kid who had gone from not knowing a single thing about football but just saying Cristiano Ronaldo's name slightly funny during a Twitch donation had now met his idol, Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the biggest athletes in the history of sport. Oh my God! Oh my god, I'm sorry. Oh my god, Ronaldo! Oh my god! Oh my god, take a picture! Hey, take a picture! Take a picture, please, please! 
Oh my God, I love you, bro. Um, you bro, yes, bro. Hey, I love you, bro. Right now, I'm a big fan, bro. We're not alone. I got you right here. And yeah, obviously the reaction was insane. It was very wholesome. Yeah, I kind of had to hold it together a little bit. Otherwise, I think Big Ron would have been out of there. But at this point, now he's met his idol. Now that he's met Cristiano Ronaldo, is the, the gag. It feels like maybe it's kind of done. Maybe that's that's the, the nice wrapping up the full circle moment. And maybe that's the end of the football stuff for Speed. But genuinely, he continues to seem interested in it. Into 2023 now, he's playing the Sidemen charity match once again, showing visual, visual improvement. Looking like someone that's actually heard of the offside rule this time. Someone that might actually be able to explain what a left back is. Once again, he was giving it large to KSI, who would start this game in goal. And his side would earn themselves a penalty into the second half. It was only one man that was going to take it, a Speed would step up to try and grab his first goal in his short footballing history. Speed! What is that? But after providing the second worst penalty of a Sidemen charity match, Speed would miss, look distraught, pull out another Brexit challenge Ooh. again, and then ask the referee for another penalty in interesting circumstances. Pen, make a wish At this point, he's really starting to go clear. He's already met Cristiano Ronaldo. He gets Neymar involved in a stream with a Brazilian going over to his house to get content together. Thankfully, no sisters involved. Otherwise, it'd be a different type of content altogether. He's videoed with Kim Kardashian, Ronaldo's spotting him from the crowd, and in the most surreal turn of events from a footballing perspective, he'd be invited to the 2023 Ballon d'Or awards ceremony. And that provided some interesting interactions with Emiliano Martinez. We're not a polite man. Yeah, no, no chance. <laughs> there was criticism for embarking in the crowd. <laughs> Probably pretty valid, to be honest with you. He was lucky that he wasn't escorted out of the place, I'm not gonna lie. A lot of people say Said that that sort of behavior, you know, ultimately won't mean that he's getting invited again. But like that is that is speed. And I'm not gonna lie. I feel like if the people involved in inviting, you know, talent or like whatever or um, influencers to the Ballon d'Or ceremony, they would know what speed is like. They know that's the reaction they're gonna get. And it didn't stop him then meeting the Brazil squad, chatting to the likes of Endrick and Rodrigo, and then even being invited to the great R9's house to hold his Ballon d'Or trophy. I don't think it's dramatic to say that no influencer or, or no content creator has ever had access to football like this before. Salt Bay touched the World Cup and he still isn't competing with him. I know, yes, cool, we've had like, I don't know, in, in the history of, of YouTube, we've had people like Road to Shore making a video with Ronaldo and Chris MD as well. A goalkeeper was your friend, right? Yeah, <laughs> he was actually. But having Neymar to your house, bro, and going to R9's gaff, holding his Ballon d'Or trophy, this is like unheard of. These are things that proper, proper celebrities would be doing. And it's fair to say that he is, you know, ultimately a, a proper, proper celebrity in the social media aspect. 22.6 million subscribers he's currently sat at. Very different to the humble beginnings of 2018 streaming to just two people. But there's a lot of information right there and there's a lot of controversy and a lot of things that have followed Speed, I feel like, all the way through his career. If we're to draw up some conclusions on how he's made it and how he, he's in, experienced this growth that is completely unheard of, completely unprecedented. And obviously there's there's very different reasons as to why. I think he's a massively larger than life character and the character almost blurs kind of dangerously at times to what he actually is in, in real life and in, in normality. You know, especially back in the day when he was raging a lot on Twitch, there were moments where you were actually like maybe a little bit concerned for him. And even that lack of knowledge now as to whether something is just a character that he's putting on or whether that's bleeding and blending into how he is on a day-to-day -day basis, it's kind of hard to tell. But I think that's kind of the mystery of it sometimes with him. Anyone I've come into contact with who's worked with Speed has always said that even when the cameras are off, like he's just that energetic 100% of the time. And look, do not get it twisted, man. I am I'm absolutely never going to defend some of the things that he did, certainly early on in his career. And I think those things sometimes sort of blend in with what I was talking about before as to how it's hard to gauge whether his character is truly put on or whether that is just kind of how hyperactive he is and maybe controversial he is on a day-to-day -day basis. What I would say is I was a lot more concerned about speed from that perspective when he first started blowing up. Those 2020 to 2021 times, there was genuinely maybe a, a, a question as to whether it was taking a proper strain on him. I think now he seems to be a little bit more happy, maybe a bit more healthy. He's managed to find that balance of just the right amount of weirdness 
to, to get reactions at things like the Ballon d'Or ceremony and to be a bit weird around the Brazil squad, but not to like actually freak them out. Enough to work with mainstream footballers whilst not making them think he's gonna kidnap their entire family, but just intriguing enough for them to wanna stream with him or get some content with him and grow their own personal sort of online status as well. It is bizarre at times to see him with these footballers, especially as I said at things as classy as the Ballon d'Or awards ceremony. The question is, will we see him at things like this again? I mean, it really, I think it's more of a reflection on what these ceremonies are like and whether they are truly in touch with the youth. Did they know what I show speed was like beforehand? I said earlier they probably should have done, but in retrospect, would I bet my house on them knowing or having ever watched the stream? Probably not. That decision might have been made by a 57 year old white individual with an AOL account and dial up internet who said, what the kids like, what I show speed, safe. Let's have him barking next to Kavicha Kavaratskelia's uncle. But they do love him. You know, not just the, the internet youth, but the footballing youth as well. Go on speed's Insta comments, bro. It is literally all young footballers. The whole first half of like the Blue Tick Brigade is Endrick, Rodrigo, Raphael, footballers that are going to have a serious impact on the next generation of sport as a whole, who are just like, geez with him. He's absolutely not the perfect individual whatsoever and does need to, I think, still take some time away to reflect on the things that he does. It is hard when you're young and in the public eye and you're live streaming. There's, there's no chance at making a mistake, but he's made some pretty big mistakes and hopefully he has learnt from them moving forward. Because if he is going to be the face of the connection between the footballing world and the youth online, world and he's gonna have to do a bit of a better job than he was doing between 2018 and 2022. What do you make of iShow Speed, man? Is it all a character? Is that what he's like just 24-7? Do you watch his content and what's next for this mental come up footballing YouTube streaming story? If you enjoyed this though, then feel free to slap a like on the video, subscribe if you are new. If you want to see more content like this, where like sort of mini documentaries about other YouTubers or the football scene as a general, then let me know down in the comment section below, experimenting with a lot more different styles of content this year. And hopefully you guys enjoy them all. But just let me know down there. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys though today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. <laughs>